NASCAR really is a regional thing. It's a sport that's most popular in the South, and it draws a huge crowd there, and don't get me wrong about that. It was big enough in some regions to get some serious national spotlight on ESPN, where I used to watch highlights and analysis of races, but I was never a car guy. I'm still not, to be honest. And so I never had the desire to watch NASCAR. As I got older, I found I did develop an interest in stock car racing, but it wasn't NASCAR that started that passion. Today, we're taking an outsider's perspective on Formula One. So this is actually an outsider's perspective in two ways. Formula One isn't exactly mainstream in the US, falling behind NASCAR and even probably IndyCar when it comes to stock car racing. But on top of that, I know almost nothing about cars. I'd sooner have an answer to what planet Jedi came from than how an internal combustion engine actually works. So there were a lot of barriers for me to get into F1 racing. To explain why I became a fan of F1, you have to understand why I enjoy sports in the first place. If you watched my last Outsider's Perspective video, you heard me go on at length about the tactical depth of soccer. That's why I love sports. Among all of the other reasons, the passion and the fans come to mind, and certainly F1 has that, what I love about sports is the tactical game of chess that comes with it. Now, I'm not saying there isn't a tactical piece to NASCAR, but the analyst's explanation of the tactical side of Formula One, plus the vast difference in tracks and locations, make me appreciate the tactics that much more. So let's begin with the most obvious difference, and one that I'm sure NASCAR fans are tired of hearing, so I'm sorry. The F1 tracks are absolutely ridiculous. They range from 10 to 23 corners, and they're found all over the world. From the Abu Dhabi desert, to Austin, Texas, to the literal streets of Monaco, every track feels and looks absolutely distinct. This isn't to say that different locales would make up for a sport that I didn't enjoy watching, but it certainly gives me a reason to feel invested in new races every week. More than that though, look at how differently the tracks are actually laid out. I mean, I've been showing you pictures of these beautiful locations, but you don't really get the full sense of what the track is like to drive. Right here is the Singapore track, the course with the most corners of any F1 track in the world. Take note of the over 90 degree turns at corners 13 and 14, in the crazy sequences at 18 through 21. Now, here's the layout for the most famous F1 course in the world, the Monaco Grand Prix in Monte Carlo. Fewer corners, but every single one of them is different. Check out five, six, and seven, and the straightaway after 19. All of this is to illustrate the point that every race, every track, every week is wildly different. So let's revisit my point earlier about tactics and sports. If you go from the 23 turns of Singapore to the tight streets of Monaco to the long straightaways of Austin, your strategy has to change every week. And this is something that analysts always discuss during races as well. That's what really got me into it. It's as you learn the myriad of things that goes into racing an F1 track, from preparing the car to selecting the tires to qualifying to the actual race strategy, that you really begin to appreciate the impressive amount of skill Formula One drivers possess. On top of that, getting to listen to the radio chatter from the drivers to their teams just brings you more and more into the experience. Watching the drivers take hairpin corners at 200 miles an hour while discussing their passing strategies with their engineers gives you all kinds of appreciation for the crazy skill of these drivers. Not only uh, are they of course discussing passing strategy, they're talking about when to take pit stops, how hard to push the car, how to manage fuel and where their teammates are on the course. And that segues us into the other tactical aspect of Formula One that I love. There are teams. I mean, ultimately it's an individual sport, of course, but the teams end up making a big difference in the overall outcome of a given race. Each team, usually owned by a car manufacturer, has two drivers apiece. At the end of the season, there are actually two different point standings, one for individual drivers and one for the teams. So throughout each race, there are these two strategies that are always in play. The drivers from each team work together to a certain extent, or don't, and of course that's a story in and of itself. What this creates is this constant chess match between the drivers, engineers, and spotters for each team. Races are short, no more than two and a half hours, but even that time, 
the weather and track conditions can change dramatically. It creates riveting and dramatic moments when drivers have to determine in split seconds if they're going to pass, if they're going to take a pit stop, or if they're going to risk, risk driving with their current equipment. Now so far, all of my perspective on this has been from a person who is not a fan of NASCAR. But I am by no means saying that if you are a NASCAR fan, you couldn't be an F1 fan as well. The races are at different times, unless F1 is in North America, so that helps. But everything you would love as a NASCAR fan is here in F1. The cars are as complex, if not more complex, than NASCAR's, so you can nerd out all you want. The races still have that same slow build to an insane, exciting finish. The strategy is even more complex, like I explained, due to the higher number of turns and more dynamic tracks. The pit stops are as crucial to the race and involve the same almost unfathomable skill as you're used to. All of this is hard to really describe with words. I mean, if you're not a racing fan, has anything I've said here really changed your mind in a significant way? If anything, what I wanted to do here is explain why I love this sport well enough to get you to just check out a race. F1 should be resuming here in the summer, and there are all kinds of race videos, highlights, and other content you can check out on YouTube to get you into it. Hell, there's even a Netflix series called Drive to Survive that has gotten more than a couple people I know much more invested in the sport, and me as well. You can get a sense of the strategy yourself by playing the latest F1 video game, which is on PS Now this very moment, which of course is what you've been seeing during this whole video. Look, for a sport that takes place almost entirely outside the United States, Formula One is actually one of the easiest sports to really sink your teeth into as a new fan. Whether you're a car guy, a sports nerd like me, a big gamer looking for a new addiction, or just someone looking for something new to do on weekends, Formula One is one of those sports that you enjoy more and more and more as you watch it. If you're curious about the fun side of F1, we've got a video on Friday playing a crazy F1 game I found on Steam a while back. You've got to see it to believe it. So subscribe so you can see if my video pitches get any better in a few days. We appreciate you.